If you want to produce a great video, you're going to need great sounding audio along with your picture. In this video, we'll show you some techniques for getting the most out of your wireless mic system. Because there are so many different makes and models of wireless systems, the first thing you need is a copy of the manual. We'll cover the basics that are common to most models, but specific menu settings and buttons vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and from model to model, even within the same brand. The most common cause of wireless mic problems on a shoot can be traced to weak batteries, especially in the transmitter. Always load fresh batteries into your units at the beginning of every session. Until you get familiar with the battery life of your particular units, plan to change out your batteries at midday or lunchtime, around four hours into the shoot. Most manufacturers advise against using common rechargeable NICAD or nickel metal hydride cells because these batteries often drop to a low voltage level fairly quickly, even though they can hold that lower voltage over a long duration. On the other hand, fresh alkaline batteries start off with a higher voltage and then diminish much more gradually. Some models, such as the System 10 portables, use a built-in lithium-ion rechargeable battery in the receiver that can operate up to 12 hours. Make sure to charge them fully the night before. In a pinch, they can be powered from the portable USB battery pack, such as those that are sold for use with cell phones. Next, make sure that all of your wireless mics are set for the best operating frequencies. Every pair of traditional UHF receiver and transmitter needs to be set to matching frequencies. Select a frequency for your first system. Leave them turned on and proceed to scan your next receiver to select the next frequency. Then set the matching transmitter. Continue this for all systems to be used. There are many frequencies to choose from, so give them some space in between. All manufacturers will have additional frequency information in the manual and online for multiple systems. One way to detect interference is to turn off your matching transmitter and watch the indicator lights for each receiver antenna. When the transmitter is turned off, neither light should come on or even flicker. If either antenna light shows any activity, it's picking up some sort of unwanted signal. It also helps to listen to the receiver for any electronic chatter along with the visual indicator light. Some of the newer systems on the market operate in the 2.4 GHz range and are frequency adaptive, automatically changing frequencies to avoid interference. Those systems simply need to be paired to each other. It's a good idea to label all of your systems to see at a glance which receivers and transmitters are pairs without having to power them up. Your choice of which lavalier to use will greatly affect the overall quality of your wireless audio. In previous videos, we talked about how to choose the right lavalier for the job. All of that applies to wireless mics as well as hardwired situations. To set the microphone input level on the transmitter, plug your headphones into the receiver. Begin with the knob turned all the way to the lowest position. While speaking into the mic, gradually raise the level until it begins to sound clear and bright and no longer muddy or in shadow. You don't want to see the peak indicator come on steady. Occasional flashes are okay with loud transients. Even though they're called wireless mics, learn to think of them as wireless cables. Essentially, you have mic connectors at either end linked to each other by radio waves. Maximize the performance of your wireless system by paying attention to this invisible pathway. Radio waves can be deflected or absorbed by human bodies, as well as metal stands, electronic equipment, power cables, or metal furnishings and props. Although some receivers have BNC mounts that readily allow you to use RF cables to remotely mount your antennas, often it's easier to just remote an entire portable receiver to improve the wireless path. Some systems, like this System 10 Pro, accomplish this easily by allowing you to use Ethernet cable to remote the receiver modules. Another good strategy is to shorten the path and avoid RF obstacles by deploying your portable receivers closer to the talent, on the edge of the set or even hidden within the set, and then run balanced audio cables back to the recorder. Accessories worth adding to your sound kit include an XLR to transmitter audio input cable. For example, this Audio-Technica XLRW input cable, and a belt and pouch kit. The XLRW cable attaches to the body pack transmitter instead of the lavalier, and provides an XLR female input for microphones or boom poles. Note that if the mic requires phantom power, you will need some sort of inline battery power supply. It will, however, work with battery-powered condensers like an AT897. The XLRW can also be used to transmit an audio feed from a mixing board or camcorder. 
Belt and pouch kits are used to secure body packs to talent. A simple pouch holds the transmitter and can be safety pinned to the inside of most wardrobe that lack pockets or provisions for a metal belt clip. When using a waist or garter belt, make sure the pack is secured inside of the belt against the body and not hanging freely. When rain, water spray, or excess perspiration become issues, many professionals use dry, non-lubricated condoms to protect the body pack transmitters. One more very important tip. When you rig a body pack transmitter on an actor, be careful not to cross the microphone line with the antenna. If you need to, just flip the body pack around so that the two do not cross each other. It's okay to bunch up excess mic line, but keep the antenna as straight as possible. If your antenna is soft or flexes easily, simply slip a thin rubber band over the tip and use a safety pin to keep the antenna in position. The rubber band will stretch or even break if the actor's physical movement accidentally puts too much strain on the pinned antenna. With these tips, wireless audio has never been simpler. In the video studio or on location, Audio Technica has you covered.